Hello, everyone. This is Gabe Gossip from Western Libraries, and I'm here with Julene Sode, also of the Libraries. And we're going to be talking to you a little bit today about MLA in this uh, online presentation. And as a starting point, before we get into our overview, Julene is going to talk to you a little bit about what MLA is used for. MLA was, is a style created by the Modern Language Association and is used by authors in the humanities areas of language and literature, the fine and performing arts, and philosophy. Okay, so uh, our general outline for this presentation is going to be talking a little bit why you cite in the first place. And, and that kind of gives you an idea of why you're going through this, uh, this process that um, may not be a favorite process for absolutely everyone, but then getting into some of the mechanics of citing sources in the text of your paper, and then finally citing sources in your reference list uh, as well. So going ahead and jumping into why we cite in the first place, um, th this might seem like a kind of strange place to start for, uh, for some folks, but one of the ideas that ends up being related to why we bother with the citation process uh, does include copyright. And copyright is something that absolutely everyone has, and it provides protection through the United States uh, legal system for original works of authorship. And when somebody has a copyright, they don't actually need to register it. That, that uh, happened to be the case at one point, but that's no longer the case. Absolutely everyone owns copyrights to their works. And so um, everyone has some legal protection, and it's encoded in our, in our laws where it says you have the rights to whatever you have created. So that's kind of the legal basis for um, using other people's works. But related to that, and what allows us to actually cite other people's works, including using quotations and using portions of that in uh, our papers or other um, scholarly work, is this idea of fair use, which is an exemption in copyright that uh, allows you to make use of certain aspects of a copyright owner's uh, works without actually asking permission. And the areas in which this really applies is criticism, commentary, news, reporting, teaching, education, parody, scholarship, or research. And so really a lot of those criteria there are the types of things that apply to specifically what we're doing in an academic context, criticism, commentary, um, of course, teaching and education, scholarship and research. Those are all uh, certainly very pertinent. So that's allowing us to use certain limited portions of other people's works in order to build our own ideas. And when you use the other ideas of people in your scholarship and your research, you're basically gathering facts and data from the sources, and you're doing that in order to support your thesis statement or to disprove it, or possibly another way to even look at it is to sort of interrogate it. Uh, one visual way that you could use to kind of think about what you're doing when you're using uh, citations in your research is you're sort of placing your idea that you're trying to put forward with your paper on top of this pyramid of ideas that's been built up over time. And so you're citing other people that are you know, immediately connected to your paper, and in turn those people have cited other people, and it's connecting your ideas to the larger world of scholarship. And in fact, joining in in a sort of social dialogue through uh, text or even other means um, to, to take part in scholarship. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about citing your sources and what that means. And to cite means you're, you're essentially pointing to the evidence. So you're building your idea. If you're, you're building an a idea on top of a pyramid, the pyramid is the evidence that you are building upon. And you need to be doing that citation whenever you use information or ideas from another work. You need to make sure you're going to be citing your source in, in those instances. So some reasons to, to cite your, your sources. There's a number of them, but letting your reader know what the original source of your information is so that they could actually look it up uh, themselves. So uh, your citations are going in your reference list are going to include enough information so that your reader can identify and retrieve those sources. You have an in-text citation where you're quoting somebody, your reader's going to uh, typically be able to go to the particular page number where that quote comes from so that they could actually check and, and know that you've done your, your research on a topic. Uh, this also applies to 
to students as well as a way to find other sources of information. If you're reading a paper and you see that they're citing someone, you might say, well, this is going to be something that I, I should pursue this. Where, where are they getting this idea from? I might be able to use this in, in my paper as well. So if you find a one source that happens to be good on your topic, it can potentially lead you to a lot of other sources that are useful because you can use their, their references and citations in order to, to find that other information. But then there's this larger ethical uh, reason that uh, is, is extremely important, especially in an academic context, and that's to give credit to the person whose idea you've quoted, summarized, or paraphrased. And if you don't do that, you can run into a particularly large um, issue, and that is the uh, dreaded plagiarism. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so plagiarism is kind of... Um, uh, an interesting word because it comes from the Latin plagiarius, and I don't know Latin, so I may be pronouncing that wrong, so uh, forgive me if you know Latin and I, I don't get that right. But what it essentially means is kidnapper. So uh, the, the way of thinking about it that I like to put out there is when you plagiarize another source, you're essentially kidnapping that person's <laughs> ideas and taking it for your own, representing it as your own. It would be like uh, you write a paper, it's sort of your baby, your child, your, your, your thing that you put a lot of work into and it's special to you. And if somebody takes and represents it as their own, then they've essentially kidnapped uh, your idea. I think in this day and age, it's easy um, to plagiarize without realizing it. And even some of our famous authors have done Absolutely. that with, yeah. by cut, cutting and pasting and not keeping track of where their works are coming from. Yeah, and um, many people, even at very high levels, get in trouble <laughs> for, for plagiarism. I, I know that there have been university presidents that have been mm -hmm. found to, to plagiarize sources. And, and th that's a good point. The intentional versus the, the mm -hmm. unintentional plagiarism sounds sinister, but in many cases people are actually not doing it mm -hmm. on purpose or they don't realize Mm -hmm. how to cite something properly, and therefore they accidentally right. end up plagiarizing. <laughs> so uh, a definition of, of plagiarism is the copying or closely imitating work of another writer or composer without getting their, their permission or passing it off a, as your original work. So it's, um, it's really, it, it could potentially be a criminal offense depending on uh, how far you go with it, but really a much better way to think about it is as a, an ethical offense. So mm -hmm. here at Western, if you plagiarize a source, you can actually get kicked, kicked out of school, depending mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the, um, the mm -hmm. extent of the plagiarism and whether they can determine if it was intentional or not. So it's taken very seriously, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is why uh, a lot of students also in turn take their citations very seriously. Anything to add on the plagiarism? Not at this point. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, another really important reason why you want to cite your sources is because the citations are a sign of quality. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of professors, because they are experts in their field, they're going to be able to look at a list of citations, and depending on the sources that have been cited, they can tell whether or not you've taken a look at, at the quality sources. Mm -hmm. And if you have, you're much more likely to then in turn have a quality paper mm -hmm. because you have a better foundation. You, you, going back to the pyramid idea, instead of you know building on top of mud bricks that are going to mm -hmm. be crumbling because they come from poorly written mm -hmm. articles or uh, journals that are a little bit less than reputable, whatever it may be, you want to have those granite stone ones so that your ideas are going to sort of stand uh, through uh, posterity. Does it come from a questionable website where maybe produced by a, a student uh, or is it from a peer-reviewed journal? Your your prof will be able to spot that in your list of citations. Yeah. So I, th I think bringing a sort of skeptical mindset to these things at all times and thinking about if I use this, what does it say about what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And will it potentially detract from it? So it's um, definitely certain, uh, a useful thing to keep in mind. Okay, th there's two places in MLA um, where you're going to be doing citations. And at this point, uh, Jillian's going to do a little bit more uh, of the talking about the mechanics of MLA. 
First of all, you want to make a mark at the place where you either quoted or used or paraphrased some, another source so that your reader can recognize uh, exactly what is coming from that source. And this source is going to be usually is included in your, your works cited list at, at the end where you give complete uh, information, so uh, complete citation information so that the reader can easily find that source. One, one item that you might just put into your into your in-text reference might be uh, personal communication, um, maybe from uh, your prof's lecture that, that hasn't been published otherwise. There's really no further information you can add to the works cited list, so it, it could stand alone. Mm -hmm. So, but generally other than that, there's oftentimes a connection between the in-text citations and the works cited list, and they kind of mirror each other yes. in a way. Uh -huh. that there's a, a sort of strand connecting them. So, when do you need to cite? Um, well, you need to cite your sources when uh, you quote a source word for word, and this can't might just be it might be a single word, a, a newly coined word. It might be a phrase or or a sentence, or it might be something that you would put in a block quotation more than uh, for forty words. But these are word by word uh, quotations, and you definitely you have to make sure those are. You, th those accurate. are accurate. Because <laughs> you're representing somebody else's ideas at Right. That point. Uh -huh. They have to be word for word um, uh, within reason. Whenever you paraphrase a, a source, um, so you're, uh, you're putting it into, make sure you're putting it into your own language. And, uh, or when you use an idea from another source, this is not a, your original idea. You're, you are maybe building uh, your paper from that idea. You need, you need to, to um, cite that source as well. And one of the things that, that I like to point out about paraphrasing is that most people think of paraphrasing as just kind of a concise summary, but that's not necessarily what paraphrasing may mm -hmm. be. It could be that you're getting an idea from another source and you're actually elaborating on it, but you're still using that idea as, as part of it. So use of an idea and paraphrasing can kind of be closely connected to each other, but mm -hmm. it's not all just about summarizing when we're talking about paraphrasing. Right. It may be, but right. in many cases it may not. Mm -hmm. So um, quoting your sources. Um, when you uh, quote your source, you need to make sure that you um, put in the page number in, in your text uh, to, um, so that the reader can easily find the, the place where the exact quotation is located. And it's probably worth pointing out here, too, that in terms of the mechanics, the period is coming after the uh, the parentheses there where we have the in-text mm -hmm. citation. And I, I think one of the, the common mistakes that I, I see with um, citations is that the period is put before that, but really that period mm -hmm. being beyond it is connecting the in-text citation to that sentence. That's right, and yeah, so, attaching it to the sentence. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I'd like to point out that with MLA, you have the author's name and, and the page number. The date is, is left out. This kind of highlights the, the focus on authorship that MLA uses rather than the, mm. the date and, and how current the information is. Yeah, some other citation styles would look very different. Chicago, you wouldn't see it at all necessarily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and APA, you would have a date in there because there are different values mm -hmm. for, for that. So, quoting, quoting your sources. Another thing you can do um, with your in-text citations when you quote your sources is you can put pieces of the information needed in that in-text citation into, the, into your own sentence structure. For example, in this case, you're, you're um, writing, DiBello found that, and then you have your quote. Then at the end of the quotation, 
again you have the page number um, it just it makes it can make for a, a nicer flow of your in-text citation and then you can be a little creative with them too but you need to make sure you have the author's name and the page number with this and so quotation. does does the uh, the parenthetical in-text citation with the parentheses with the page number mm -hmm. does that always come immediately after the, the quote itself yes yeah. that uh, Paraphrasing. Um, yeah, I, I have to confess at a certain point in my career, I probably thought grabbing a thesaurus if I had one and swapping <laughs> out some words yep. and maybe switching the yeah. sentence around um, that, I w that I was somehow putting it uh, in my own words and, and, uh, and maybe I didn't need to quote it. But or I didn't need to cite it. A paraphrase has to be a, a restatement of the original source, source's ideas in your own words. Mm. Uh, I think one way you can kind of check this, and I think uh, the Writing Center will, will say this is true, is if, if, it, if the uh, state restatement sounds like your style of writing, mm -hmm. not like somebody else's style. It's going to flow better. It's going to flow better, yeah. and it's going to sound better. Yeah, and so in many ways, a paraphrasing can actually sound better overall with your the structure of your paper because mm -hmm. it's uh when you quote you can kind of make it it makes it choppier choppier yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so um w one suggestion that i have for paraphrasing sometimes is to just stop and stop trying to write it mm -hmm. and just say it out loud mm -hmm. like if you were talking to a friend how would you say this idea that you are trying to to paraphrase and when you hear yourself say it out loud, then it's going to perhaps come a little bit more natural as to mm -hmm. how you would use it in your actual mm -hmm. words. And because uh, when you're writing, you can kind of get locked into the words that you're mm -hmm. currently looking mm -hmm. at. And, and so I think that's, that's a helpful. great idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you paraphrase, you do not put a paraphrase in quotation marks because you're putting it into your own words you're not doing a direct quote word by word but uh, um, page numbers should often be included since they assist the reader in locating the reference now sometimes you might be getting the idea from a, like a complete book and in that mm -hmm. case you might just be citing the author's last name or but but often you're getting it from a particular place in a chapter or, or a particular page range and and then it's good um, to include those page numbers even though it's not a direct quote mm -hmm. it helps the writer or the reader find uh, the source yeah and this can vary from other citation styles as well where they they do that a little bit differently mm -hmm. so the work cited this is comes at the end of your your um, paper and it should start always start on on a new page and and be in alphabetical order by the uh, author's last name, or if it might if it starts with with a title of a, a a book where there's no author or a web page where there's no author, you would start with the the title. And you, you should make sure that that you include all the works that you cited in your in your document, unless by, by chance you have a personal uh, 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 citation that where there's really no do nothing that the, the reader can go back to. Mm -hmm. um, so like the professor lecture. Like the lecture or... Unless it were on YouTube or something like that. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> the, briefly, though. <laughs> yeah, right. So... Um, or even uh, discussions that took place in class or mm -hmm. through the, the mm -hmm. through Canvas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could be an email too. That, yeah, because uh, people can't look that up. They later. can't look that up. Yeah. Unless it's the federal government doing it. Well, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few exceptions. <laughs> Uh, reference list citations. Okay, all the information about the publication you need to identify um, in, include author, title, publication information, date, and and maybe some other publication uh, information. Now, every citation may not have. Uh, there might, might be some missing pieces, but 
you should at least look um, for each of these items to include in, in your citation. And I, I tend to think that um, the trickiest part or the, the least consistent part between different types of sources is the publication information part of it. W- would mm-hmm. you say that it, that's probably a fair characterization? Yeah, in the, f- in the format that it's put in your yeah, It starts citation. changing if it's a journal article versus mm-hmm. a book versus mm-hmm. a book chapter versus mm-hmm. YouTube videos or whatever. Yeah, a lot be. of students include uh, that they have to include uh, publication information in a uh, publisher information in a journal article, and, and you don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you would for the book. <laughs> but you would for the book. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Speaking of which. And citing books, yes. Um, uh, pretty straightforward. And one, one difference that MLA does between if you've used APA before is the first author has her, has her last name and then first name. But the other authors are, you enter the authors just as they would come, first name, uh, last name. So again, I think that kind of emphasizes authorship a little bit. Use the last name to find, so that you can find your um, reference in the cited reference list from your in-text reference. And then the other authors uh, are are included as you would speak them. Um, Title of book, place of publication, publisher, date of publication. And I think one cool thing about if you've used this book from a, a, a library source or from a summit uh, book request and you have a piece of that information is missing, you can go back to the library record and um, pick up the publication information. So here's a screenshot from OneSearch, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. pointing out where you can find all those pieces of information mm-hmm. Don't have that mm-hmm. book on hand book t- in all in, in the different t- the title field, the author field, um, place of publication and publisher and date is is all there. You can pull it out of the record. So it's not likely to be formatted exactly the way we see it here, but no, you you'll have to, to do. It. You're still responsible for yeah. the formatting, but yeah, um, so it can be handy um, as a reference. So, citing books, pretty um, uh, straightforward. Author, title, publishing information. Uh, One interesting thing about MLA is it wants you to tell them whether the item came in print or or electronically or some other format. So they ask they ask you to put the format when it's a book, usually at the end end of the citation. And I, I think the, the small things are, are the things that sometimes um, trip up students. And depending on how strict the instructor mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. it can end up impacting uh, mm-hmm. the grades. So the italics on the title, you want to make oh, sure the, you get oh, that right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes the capitalization, if you're copying it from, mm-hmm. from one search, the capitalization on the t- title is not going to be right. So you're going to have right. to make sure you get that right, right. too. Right. And uh, unlike APA, that uh, where they don't cap- capitalize every every word in the title if it's not a proper noun, and they don't uh, italicize. It, it looks very different. Mm-hmm. And so. it's worth pointing out uh, also the, um, a few formatting things to watch out for. The hanging indent. Right. You kind of make sure you you, uh, you get that in there, and so you can do that in Word mm-hmm. under the paragraph feature in mm-hmm. Word, and double spacing as well. So some things that, that some folks may not be used to doing but are, right. are a good idea right. to, to uh, yeah. make sure you learn how to do so that you can do yeah. it correctly. I also think it's interesting, too, that with the book citation, the the year is almost right at the end, and it, that just goes to show that with MLA currency, That's right. it's yeah. really yeah. very different yeah. than other it, fields. It could be um, 18, 1852, and <laughs> it still could be useful in, in the area of, yeah. of history or um, uh language or literature. Sure. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're a Shakespeare scholar, then of course you're going to be looking at some pretty <laughs> old stuff. And uh, it, uh, on this uh, screen you see uh, the t- in-text uh, citation if you're paraphrasing, paraphrasing or if quoting. And you can see um, how if you're paraphrasing, you might have a range of 
of numbers where from where a uh, page numbers from where you got your ideas and if it's uh, a small piece in a, in a large book it's good to include those page numbers but if you uh, if your uh, quotation kind of came sprung or your ideas that you got from the book came kind of came from the the book as a whole or a chapter as a whole or an article as a whole you might just use the author's last name but if you're quoting you always want to include the specific page number that your quote came from. Mm -hmm. So article from a database. All right. Um, uh, journal articles and articles from databases are a little more complicated than a simple book uh, with an author or two. Um, you want, want to be able to identify your authors and your article your journal title, in, in the case of, um, here's, a, here's a difference, in the case of a journal citation, your journal title, the name of your journal, would uh, should be in, parent, uh, in italics, while your article title is going to be in quotation marks. So that is how MLA marks off the, the title of the article with the title of the journal. Um, you want to note the page numbers and volume and issue number two. Although, um, if there's not an issue number, usually it, it doesn't matter as much because it, the paging is usually continuous in a volume. So it starts it, on page one in January and right, ends and on page who knows what in, in December. December yeah. yeah, typically. So, so it won't hinder the reader from finding that um, article. And uh, and an another kind of a little difference with with uh, MLA right now asks that you um, indicate the database that the article was retrieved from. To in this case, it's an MLA Interna International Bibliography database. So we have an example here. And here is a put, not nicely put together citation for your cited reference list from a journal article in an online database. Uh, and here, as, as I mentioned before, you have the title of the article in uh, quotation marks, the name of the journal in, in uh, italics. And the, the volume and ish and issue number of the journal are indicated in this case by with a, a period between the volume and the number. 17.1. 17.1. It's not, not it's not web 17.1. <laughs> it's volume 17 issue number one. Yeah and so it's kind of interesting with uh, with MLA that they they don't use the word volume or the abbreviation volume or anything mm -hmm. for issue mm -hmm. because people just know Mm -hmm. who are familiar with it, with MLA, but mm -hmm. that's what each of those numbers means based on the formatting, so it can be more right. concise in a way. It becomes mm -hmm. code, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. And then, of course, the the page numbers. And then you you're, the listing of the database where the article was found full text. And again, instead of print now, we have web to indicate the format of, of the item. Not internet, web. Web, <laughs> yeah. yes. And and then, to end it all, the date you viewed uh, the article or retrieved the article for your use. Not to be confused with the date of publication. Of publication, yeah. And it's easy to confuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, citing the journal article in print... Uh, looks much the same. You have your authors, and again, note the second author is first name, last name, whereas the first author, last name, and then first name, so that you can find it in the cited reference list. Uh, italics for the title of, of the journal. Uh, the name of the journal is, oh, uh, not italics, but quotation marks and, around the article title the name of the journal in italics, and again, you have that 13.1 for 
volume and issue number, volume 13, issue 1, and then you have the date and the page numbers. And then to top it all off, uh, you have the format, which is in print. So in some ways, a, a print uh, reference is actually easier than a, a, little more a database one because yeah. you don't have to do a data <laughs> access and, right. and all those kinds of things in the database you got it from. So according to MLA, um, we have a list of the items that you uh, need to cite when you cite a web page. Now this is a, we're entering into an area that where students I know have a lot of difficulty in how do you cite a particular web website. I swear there are millions of different kinds of websites with different ways, uh, with different looks and feels and, and different ways can't that always they... find that information no. <laughs> on the page you're on. No, yeah. you can't. And um, so you can, what you want to go for are as many elements uh, as you have in your particular website page that you're using. Hopefully, hopefully you'll have some authors. Often you don't. You might have um, a corporate author, uh, a page created by an organization that that might be a, treated as a corporate author. Yeah, and so just to clarify what a corporate author is, is if we were citing Western Washington University at, on one of their pages and we didn't see an author listed, we could assume the corporate author is Western Washington University. And, and that's what we right. mean by corporate author. We don't mean mm -hmm. a uh, for-profit corporation no, necessarily. We no. just mean any organization can be referred right. to as a corporate author. Rather than an individual or a group of individuals. Uh, document title, um, probably you'll have no trouble with that one. Title of website, sometimes you, your search might land you straight in a document title and you might have to go back to the root of that web website to find the the title of the, the website. And that certainly will help the the reader find the the information. Publisher, often this is is the I could be the organization that published the information. The National Institute of Health, for example, is a publisher of all sorts of information on on the web. Uh, date of publication. Uh, this can be ca kind of tricky and hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it might be if you have a document web on on a website, it might be at the bottom. It might might say updated on, and you could use that update date. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, if you go back to the um, original uh, website that that um, has. Published the, the web page is part of. Web page is part of. Yeah. You'll find uh, information about uh, when it was published there. And um, but but you, I think sometimes you find they're just you know you've looked high and low. You've done given it your best uh -huh. shot and you just don't don't see any date of publication. Mm -hmm. um, date of access. You should know that. You should know what day it is. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> that should be easy. Yeah. <laughs> Although, um, no stress if, if you've used the information and you can't find and you didn't jot down the date you found that website, if the website is still up, you can use the date, the, the date that you last found it. Mm -hmm. and it's no problem. Um, and then optionally, an, uh, a URL. MLA no longer requires a URL for... Uh, the citation, but your professor might, or you might determine that it might be hard for the reader to find this website if they didn't have yeah. a URL, and it's it's always good to include it. Yeah, I could think of a number of cases where mm -hmm. that would be mm -hmm. true. Yeah, URLs can help, although they can also go bad. <laughs> so here we have a, an example of of one where you have. Um, what we could call a, a, a corporate author, a committee that uh, published some guidelines for editors of scholarly editions. And it's from on the Modern Language Association webpage. They're the publishers of it. So that's kind of the, the location where you would put the publisher. And then um, you have MLA. Uh, and the date uh, of that the 
particular uh, item was was either updated or published. And then you have the the date that you oh of course see that it's a you have to let them know it's a website uh-huh. so you, <laughs> you have web. web period and then and you have the date that you viewed or used the material for your paper. And so I, I think one thing that's always useful to keep in mind is that there's some gray area here, and it's it's not always easy to know what exactly to include or where to find it. Um, and, and when students have those questions, that they're, they're more than welcome to come to us and, and ask us for some advice on how we would recommend finding that information. Yes, yeah. Uh, I think particularly for websites, I think I give more help to, help to students um, with website citations than anything else. Yeah, yeah. And, um, like sometimes it, just knowing what the title is mm-hmm, is a challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, right. I get. I think of government documents, in particular, government websites where they have what appear to be three different titles that you could potentially use, and mm-hmm. knowing which one of those is the most useful mm-hmm. or how you might format it is uh, is not always mm-hmm. very straightforward. And I always try to show students uh, a good example, either either from the MLA website or handbook, so to so they can see where I went to get uh, to try to answer that question. Mm-hmm. So um, just to to wrap things up, uh, one thing that we do want to point out is that there is some um, software out there. You you may be using something already, say a website like uh, Son of Citation Machine or BibMe. Um, A lot of those are um, problematic (laughs) for Mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, However, that said, there is some good um, um, reference management software out there. And the one that um, the Western Libraries recommends is Zotero, and we provide support in using Zotero as well. So especially if you, you think you're going to be getting involved in an in-depth research project where sort of building out your own personal database and using a tool that will export formatted citations for you, that that uh, it might be worth investing the time in, in learning a little bit about Zotero and all the, the options that it has available. Um, One thing that I do want to point out, though, is even though citation software is out there and a lot of our databases even, for instance, Mm -hmm. will generate Mm -hmm. citations for you. um, The EBSCO ones do a... uh, Yeah, EBSCO ProQuest. mm -hmm. uh, You Mm -hmm. can even go on to WorldCat for book Mm -hmm. uh, references sometimes. But that said, all those are generated by um, some sort of automated process. Mm -hmm. And you still have to make sure you check your citations Mm -hmm. because there's almost always one or two small things that are wrong with those. And so uh, just being aware of, of all that is going to be helpful. But the tool can give you kind of a head start on something mm-hmm. that you can then format. From give there. you a starting point, and then, but you're the bottom line for um, that site. You're, you're going to be responsible for yeah, that citation. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So in wrapping things up, uh, we, we're always happy to take questions from you. We do provide support for for MLA in the libraries, and there's a variety of ways that you can contact us. And um, we have uh, a number of folks that that have some good MLA background, and Julian in particular, which is why she's been asked to to do this presentation uh, here. So, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add about MLA? Uh, You know, I I think a lot of students have used it in high school and are familiar with it. It hasn't changed that. There are just a few things that have changed recently. And uh, use what you're comfortable with. If you have a choice of, of styles to use, use what you're comfortable with. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, thanks. <laughs>